Hello people, in this video let us look at cretinism. Look at the spelling here, cretinism. Okay, cretinism. You should not forget the spelling. It is T-I-N-I. Okay, this is nothing but congenital hypothyroidism. So, thyroid levels are low. So, what is low? Thyroid levels are low, hypo. Okay, so this is congenital. So, by birth itself, this person has low thyroid level. So, basically, uh, thyroid hormone, what does thyroid hormone do for us? It is critical for normal brain growth and myelination of the nerves. Right? So, thyroid hormone is secreted uh, by thyroid gland under the influence of TSH. So, the brain is telling TSH, right? the pituitary gland is releasing TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone which will uh, stimulate the thyroid and the thyroid gland will make what? T3 and T4. Okay. So, those are the important hormones. So basically the thyroid gland makes thyroxine, triiodothyronine and calcitonin. Okay, These two are from the follicular cells, isn't it? And calcitonin is actually from the para follicular cells. Anyways, in this we are looking at these two. That is T4 and T3, right? So what and all uh, these thyroid hormones are going to help in? maintenance of growth metabolism and mental development okay so as as of everything everything can have uh, hypo and hyper hypo can be congenital or acquired if it is congenital it is called as cretinism and if it is acquired it is called as juvenile hypothyroidism so in this what are we looking at we are looking at the congenital hypothyroidism or cretinism the thing with this is it is the most common type of hypothyroid state so that is why it is very important to know okay congenital hypothyroidism or cretinism is the most common type of hypothyroid state and it can lead to gross mental as well as physical retardation and risk of death from super super added infections okay so this is why why we are reading this so you have understood the importance okay so let's continue here so let us look at the earliest manifestations classical features of cretinism etc okay so what are the earliest manifestation earliest manifestation guys are lethargy sluggishness oversleeping Pay attention here guys, uh, whenever these children are born, usually they will be large and heavy at birth, okay. So they will be uh, big, right, you should understand that they will be big, they will be heavy. Lethargy, oversleeping, sluggishness, these seem the same, right. They are lethargic, they have a hoarse cry, they have feeding difficulties, they have persistent constipation, prolongation of physiological jaundice, abdominal distension with umbilical hernia, anemia which does not respond uh, well to hemantinics and the skin is cold, dry, rough and thick. In this, this lethargy you pay attention to, okay, skin motling you pay attention to, <coughs> then what else is umbilical hernia you pay attention to because these have higher score, okay. Now let us move to the classical features of cretinism. So usually you can see this when 8 to 12 weeks. How will the face be? There is a large tongue protruding from large open mouth okay, with thick lips. The eyelids are puffy. There is a depressed nasal bridge and widely, seemingly widely apart eyes. It is a pseudo hypertelorism. It just seems like that. Wrinkled forehead with sparse eyebrows. Eyebrows are very sparse. Hairline reaching to exceedingly low level over it. That is over the eyebrow, is it? Over the forehead. Classic features still continues. The neck, neck is short. Okay, neck is short. Then there is a pad of supraclavicular fat. Okay, then scalp hair is scanty. Scanty scalp hair. And uh, the hair is also dry, rough, brittle. Skin you already saw, it will be cold, rough, thick and dry. Cold you can say hypothyroidism, right? So metabolism itself is less so cold. Anterior fontanel and coronal sutures are widely open. So remember the anterior fontanel, the anterior fontanel 
often widely open okay voice is hoarse so just see see how the voice will be from this baby hoarse what do you say hoarse is very rough ha, uh, what is harsh okay then dentition is delayed so uh, delay in development right physical mental everything so de dentition is delayed hypotonia so the body is hypotonic continuing the classical features guys this hypotonia what we we said can be present with muscular hypertrophy hypertrophy more muscles muscular hypertrophy okay so this is called as kosher debre c me laigne wow kds syndrome so that image is shown here so it can be present with muscular hypertrophy okay that is kds that is kosher debre semi laigne kds syndrome okay continuing the classical features guys abdomen is often distended umbilical hernia can be present so abdomen is distended umbilical hernia can be there hands are broad with short fingers does it look like that here hands are broad with short fingers okay then anemia is generally present constipation it does not re uh, reduce uh, with laxatives or changing in feeding regimens nothing is helping with this constipation so this can be another thing so this is very similar to what we have seen in the early uh, manifestation right in early manifestations what and all you saw anemia was there early manifestations anemia was there right umbilical hernia also was there and abdomen uh, often distended this also uh, was there isn't it what else was there in clinical and early both <coughs> skin what they told about skin was there isn't it let's go here skin this point was there then lethargy that they have not mentioned here okay then horse voice is horse was there in earliest also okay what else anemia okay so these are very common what is this skin being cold voice voice being horse abdomen being distended umbilical hernia anemia all these are common between these earliest and classical features now look at what is very important here large tongue very important inactivity yes that we have put in the earliest sign skin being rough dry cold this is also very important we bold it or red it okay then edematous face puffy edematous face or puffy right umbilical hernia very important so let's go here umbilical hernia very important so these have more score okay so this you have to remember yes this uh, has some more features that you can see probably a little late look at these sluggish yes so you already know earlier symptomolitis mental retardation physical milestones are delayed growth retarded this upper segment lower segment uh, of the body that ratio it will continue to be the same infantile skeletal proportion only this will, it will be there okay so that is another thing let's take a uh, take a status check still how much is there causes we have to look at diagnosis differential diagnosis treatment prognosis prognosis is good if it is uh, diagnosed fast and treatment is given with the uh, uh, they'll just give uh, the hormone replacement therapy it is okay so there's something called as a hypothyroid index look at this so this will tell you what should uh, be given more score and an overall this index of over 4 should arouse suspicion so if there's a large tongue score is 3 inactivity skin motling edematous face umbilical hernia more than 0.5 cm in diameter just half more than half a cm in diameter that's quite a small thing right more than half a cm in diameter okay diameter okay then other things uh, which are uh, one that is feeding difficulty dry skin skin is there here also right but this is skin motling what is motling you know that will be like marks okay marks of with spots or smears marks with spots or 
smears this is the definition dry skin is just one point but skin mottling is three points okay then hypotonia okay uh, open posterior fontanel oh they are talking about the posterior fontanel if it is open it is one anterior fontanel is not there here constipation one so mainly what and all will you look for we will look for large tongue inactivity skin mottling all these are score 3 edematous face edematous face umbilical hernia that is greater than 0.5 cm in the diameter so what are the th things that have score of 3 large tongue inactivity skin mottling edematous face umbilical hernia more than 0.5 cm in diameter this large tongue you can also say macroglossia okay but this is uh, not the only cause uh, there can be lot of other causes for macroglossia okay when it comes to the causes of hypothyroidism mainly you should know the absence of the thyroid gland this is very important okay the absence of the thyroid gland itself okay that is a thyroidic cretinism there is a thyroidic no thyroid itself what is this a a thyroidic cretinism or there could be a rudimentary thyroid this genesis of thyroid so this actually is also called a sporadic cretinism another thing you can note here is uh, anti thyroid medication used during pregnancy so mother is taking anti thyroid drugs so the baby's thyroid levels are low this photo shows that the child's mother had been on anti thyroid drugs for thyrotoxicosis during pregnancy just pay attention to this one also anti thyroid antibodies okay sometimes this can be positive anti thyroid antibodies you will see this in diagnosis sometimes these antibodies can be there against the thyroid gland main you have looked at look at the other things iodine deficiency pituitary disease there is destruction of thyroid stimulating hormone itself then um, hypothalamic problem right that will lead to again same tsh issue right with the pituitary inborn defect in synthesis so iodine transport has defect there is problem in releasing the hormone production of the hormone release of the hormone storage of the hormone there is some problem in the utilization of the hormone okay okay let's move on we have to look at the diagnosis so main thing you should note here t3 t4 levels are decreased how difficult is to see this right this is the main thing so this is the most reliable diagnostic investigation all those whatever you saw clinical features index and all you leave that but this is the most important diagnostic criteria okay as soon as you say that the hormone levels are low what will happen to the hormones uh, the thyroid stimulating levels the tsh levels will be high obviously tsh levels will be high so these two you keep very specific these two okay this is going to be high what is high tsh is high now what happens uh, let us see other things there is in x ray you will see epiphyseal dysgenesis look at this cretinism note the epiphyseal dysgenesis of the head of femur so there is some dysgenesis of the head of femur epiphyseal margin is irregular and fluffy substance is fragmented so basically you will do x ray studies for bone age presence of epiphyseal dysgenesis right so because you are saying that the proportion of the upper segment lower segment of the body will continue like infantile skeletal proportion so you want to know the age of this person you will try to estimate it with the x ray right uh, bone age you will see then you will in when you are seeing that you will also see epiphyseal dysgenesis so uh, you will see numerous fragmented foci of ossification mostly in the head of femur that is what they have shown here and even it can happen in the head of humerus they are talking about checking the blood glucose levels fasting and postprandial then serum alkaline phosphatase is low okay so alkaline phosphatase is low ecg is of low voltage so all these low 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 you can say but tsh is high okay then bmr is low 
obviously uh, metabolic rate is low protein bind bound iodine they are saying uh, below some 2 microgram but again not de dependable pbi protein bound iodine then radioactive iodine is usually reduced but will they give radioactive iodine isn't that destructive continuing with the diagnosis see guys what and all could be raised tsh is raised serum carotene is raised serum cholesterol is usually elevated okay usually children cholesterol level will be less than adults okay but here what will happen the serum cholesterol will be elevated okay so that is the diagnosis so what and all we learnt in diagnosis let's summarize we saw that uh, T3, T4 will be low but TSH will be high what and all will be low the uh, alkaline phosphatase levels will be low ECG is low voltage then x-ray you will see epiphyseal dysgenesis and bone age will be different right uh, from how the person looks then um, BMR will be low, PBI they are saying will be below something, radioactive iodine is reduced. Okay. What is more? Serum carotene, cholesterol, all these will be more. Okay. Let's take a check on how much more is left. Differential diagnosis is left. Okay. Then treatment is left. That's all. Only two things are left. Okay. Let's look at this. Differential diagnosis, just remember. Down syndrome, pituitary dwarfism, type of mucopolysaccharidosis that is gargoylism, Hurler syndrome. Mainly you should know that pituitary dwarfism, they will not have any mental issue. Mentally they will be fairly sound, only physically that uh, they will have stunted stature. Okay, And in pediatric uh, practice, this uh, pituitary dwarfism rarely causes any difficulty. And in this one, Hurler syndrome, they are saying that the facial features and all will be very similar. But in this, you will see presence of corneal cloudiness, deformities of spine, hepatosplenomegaly, etc. Which you can differentiate from cretinism. Down syndrome, you know, trisomy of uh, 21 chromosome and lot of other features of Down syndrome, you know, right? In these two, Down syndrome and this Hurler syndrome, there, there can be mental and growth retardation. Macroglossia itself can have so many other causes, so amyloidosis, then some Beckwith syndrome, some some can be physiologic, wow, mucopolysaccharidosis, amyloidosis, glycogen storage disease, Beckwith syndrome, congenital arteriovenous fistula, local lymph angioma, rhabdomyoma, angioneurotic edema. So, so many reasons are there just for macroglossia, right? But did you see? Okay, it's other causes. So, first cause we'll put what other causes? Cretinism can be a cause, right? Cretinism and other causes we have written. Okay. What's the treatment, guys? Just give that person thyroid hormone, give them synthetic levothyroxine, right? Synthetic they are giving that is L troxin. For neonates and infants, 10 to 15 microgram per kg per day and then after one year of age, they are just giving 5 to 10, a little lesser, isn't it? But their kg will be more. What do you say? Okay. Um, so, as soon as you diagnose, you should start with the replacement therapy. Treatment is for life. Okay. Then, uh, prognosis, if you give uh, the replacement therapy in the first 6 months of life, they will be very good prognosis. Okay. Just remember that in treatment there is a little more information. Try iodothyronine. This is not recommended, but some people say that it's it is you know the rapidity of its action may be of advantage because what the cells use directly is what T3, right? So rapidity of action can help. See T4 is converted to T3 inside the cell. T4 is converted to T3 inside the cell. The T3 is taken up by what? receptors for thyroid hormone are in the nucleus okay the nucleus inside the nucleus this t3 is taken up and then there is a lot of protein synthesis etc right so hypothalamus releases what thyroid releasing hormone then pituitary releases what thyroid stimulating hormone and the gland itself releases the hormone okay <clears throat> so what and all will you be uh, expecting after giving this treatment there will be return of activity control of constipation warmness of the skin Correct uh, feeding, more feeding, appetite, improvement in the PBI that is iodine levels and uh, T3 and T4 levels, all of those should improve, right? 
then what about over dosage what will happen if you give excess thyroid hormone Di now it is going to go from constipation it's going to go to diarrhea restlessness excitability sleeplessness okay so many things okay there is something also called as craniocyanos what is the word craniocyanos tosis so that is why you should be adjusting the dose correctly so in this craniocyanostosis what can happen the uh, baby skull bones they can fuse uh, together early so hypothyroidism was doing what it was keeping all these fontanelles open but now you gave so much thyroid that all of these fused much faster craniosynostosis as this one if they are saying x-ray will show delayed bone age okay and then what else you will see in uh, clinical features itself you can say short stature delayed puberty delayed sexual maturation poor performance at school okay so for this neonatal screening they are using cord blood <coughs> okay and then they can confirm it with the normal t4 t tsh assay so this one uh, where if the thyroid hormone is low and tsh is not elevated okay that is a different condition so that time you will have to check for thyroid binding capacity globulin deficiency or secondary hypothyroidism it uh, it can happen in premature infancy it seems let's take a quick recap so we started off with cretinism cretinism congenital hypothyroidism so basically we saw that first trimester baby is dependent on the maternal thyroxin and then its thyroid gland should take over the thyroid gland makes thyroxin t4 t3 and also calcitonin this thyroid hormone is important for the maintenance of growth metabolism and mental development so basically if there is a uh, cretinism that is congenital hypothyroidism it's the most common type of hypothyroid state that's why you should know and you can very easily treat it if it is caught right <coughs> so early manifestations lethargy oversleeping sluggishness umbilical hernia skin is cold dry rough what else you saw large tongue puffy eyelids right edematous face voices hoarse again skin cold rough dry thick mottling then um, hypotonia anemia hands are broad but fingers are short so the index you should remember these macroglossia inactivity skin mottling edematous face and umbilical hernia these five will get score of 3 and an index of 4 over 4 should raise suspicion of cretinism other features mental retardation poor performance in school delayed milestones and uh, they'll have infantile skeletal proportions causes we saw mainly there is an absence of the thyroid gland or uh, dysgenesis of uh, right the thyroid there could be antithyroid medications taken during pregnancy etc neonatal screening uh, using cord blood they will do okay then uh, a normal t4 tsh assay it will show that t3 t4 are decreased but tsh is more then you will see in x ray that there is delayed bone age epiphyseal dysgenesis then you will see serum alkaline phosphatase is low ecg is low voltage main things then uh, tsh is elevated serum carotene is raised serum cholesterol is usually elevated antithyroid antibodies can be there differential diagnosis remember you should differentiate it from neonatal hypothyroxinemia down syndrome pituitary dwarfism or uh, this uh, hurler syndrome macroglossia itself has so many classes uh, causes cretinism it could be physiological amyloidosis mucopolysaccharidosis etc etc how do you treat just give them synthetic levothyroxine and prognosis is good So that's all in this video about uh, cretinism. Bye bye.